Vita est iter. I don't remember much from my Latin class, but I do remember that. It's a simple phrase which means life is a journey. And we as Christians are not simply on one big open journey, but especially through the season of Advent, we are on a journey of hope. We are moving towards something definite, towards something that is unfailing. And so today I ask you the question, do you hear the hope of Christ in this journey? And as we seek to hear the voice of Christ, as we discern and seek to listen for God speaking in our lives, let us stand as we listen and hear the word of the Lord. Let's stand. Our passage comes to us this morning from the Holy Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. When I got here three years ago, one of the first things Darren McClellan taught me about church is that church ought to be the place where we can tell the truth about ourselves in the presence of a holy God and one another without fear, shame, and condemnation. And if I am to be your pastor, and if we are to live into community together, then I too must be willing to stand in this place and tell the truth about my life in the presence of a holy God and the presence of all of you without fear, without shame, and without condemnation. Today is a difficult day to preach, and this passage is a hard passage to preach. In July, David and I sat down and prayed for God to lead us as we put together the sermon series and the scriptures, and even who would preach on what Sunday. And I believe that God in his divine wisdom desired for me to preach this scripture today. I say all of this because Caroline and I just a few months ago were experiencing the same kind of exuberance and joy exhibited by Mary and Elizabeth. Today was to be the day where I stood and announced great joy to announce that we were expecting twins but sadly, that is not the news that I share today. A few weeks ago, Caroline and I were told that we had miscarried both of our children. This news was and is painful, heart-wrenching, and difficult. It would be untrue for me to say that as I have wrestled with this loss, that my heart and my soul turned immediately to the notion or the feeling of hope. And as cruel as I might think it would be to, that God would have called me to preach this message of two pregnant women in the midst of grieving our own miscarriage. I also know that God is in the business of redemption and faithfulness. I know that our faith is a faith of shared experiences and community. My prayer as I preach this morning is that our story of loss will be of comfort to those who have experienced this same grief but also for those who have any kind of unreconciled or grief or pain in their soul. The story of Advent, the story of Mary and Elizabeth is a story of hope and expectation, even when it is un unexpected and even when you can't believe it. I need God's promise of hope today because without it I have nothing to bring peace or hope to our loss. There is no rationalizing or explaining away pain. The only way to find resolution is in the sure promises of our God. The hope of God promised in Jesus Christ is an assurance that sadness and pain and darkness will not have final victory. 
It is a promise that though there may be pain for the night, the joy of God is assured in the morning. It is a hope that God is faithful to his people and desires to draw near to them and fill them with the Holy Spirit to redeem their pain. Luke's entire gospel for us is a story of hope. And it is in this home, in the hill country of Judea, that the journey of God's incarnated hope to this world begins. That if we are to hear the hope of Jesus Christ in our life, we must first understand what is being said. Luke's entire gospel is told by the writer Luke. But as as Luke tells us in his very introduction, he himself was not present in the ministry of Jesus Christ. But rather, Luke has listened to several who follow Jesus, and he has heard them and listened to them closely, and he has made an orderly account of the ministry of Jesus so that people will know the hope of the Messiah. So we would not even have the gospel of Luke had he not been patient to sit and to listen to this story, and to hear the message of Christ that had transformed the lives of those upon whom he based his gospel account. What I also appreciate about the entire first chapter of Luke is that it is a series of events of people being approached and spoken to by God or messengers of God, and then we get to watch how they react. We see Zechariah met in the temple And the angel Gabriel comes to him and tells him that his wife Elizabeth, who has been barren for years and is quite old in age, will be expecting a son. And Zechariah doesn't believe, and the angel makes him mute because of his lack of belief. And he remains mute until the birth of his son, upon which words of praise echo forth. Then we see Mary approached by the angel Gabriel and told that she will be bearing a son. And not any son, but the very son of God who will change the world. Every character in this first chapter has heard from God. They have listened to God. And now they are responding to what they have heard in faith. What I love about this episode is that we see Mary walking into Elizabeth's house. And it simply says that she greeted her and then Elizabeth rejoiced. Now, I'm quite sure the episode didn't go like this. Elizabeth, I'm here. And then she rejoiced. I'm thinking there was more that happened in that time. So what were they talking about? What was being said? I mean, Mary walked pregnant for three days in the hill country to her relative's house. Now, you think she might have been a little worn out? But can you imagine, just for a second, what were they talking about? Neither one of them had any communication for quite some time. So they had a lot to catch up on. But imagine when they walk in and both of them look at each other and they see that they are both bearing children. So then, as expectant mothers do, they begin talking about the various symptoms they've been feeling, the journeys that they've been going through, exchanging tips about what to eat, what to drink, and all those kind of fun things. And then they get around to, wait, who told you that you're going to be having a child? Wait, Gabriel? And then they begin to see that their children are not any normal children. But they're expecting sons who will do the holy work of God. Elizabeth is bearing John the Baptist who will be the messenger for the message, Jesus Christ. The lives of these two young boys will be inextricably linked for their entire life. But as they are having this conversation, it's clear that in the middle of this, God decides to join the conversation. And I believe that as they are sharing this great news that it says the Holy Spirit comes upon Elizabeth and she begins to rejoice. And as the Holy Spirit comes upon her and as she's having this conversation with Mary, not only does she rejoice, But even the child within her leaps for joy. Even this unborn child hears the hope of Jesus Christ and rejoices. 
There is something about Jesus, even in the womb, that is already bringing hope into the world. He is already commanding majesty and glory and honor and bringing promise and praise upon the lips of those who he calls. As the Holy Spirit fills Elizabeth, she responds with words of blessing and praise, recognizing the work that God has done on her and Mary. If we are to hear hope, we have to know what is being said, but we also must be listening. I don't know about you, but I love whitewater rafting. It's a blast. <laughs> you go, and you're going down the river, and you're not sure if you're going to make it back or not, but you know it's a lot of fun. But I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. If you put me in a raft by myself, it's going to be a disaster. You're going to see me on the news. It's going to be bad. But when you go whitewater rafting, what is the first thing that you do? You sit down and you meet with who? You meet with the guy who's going to be in the back of the boat, right? And what do they do? They say, listen up, because I'm going to tell you what to expect. Now, you can either A, choose to listen to them, or B, you can continue posting pictures on Instagram and taking selfies as you get ready for your journey and not get, it, get ready for what's about to happen. But you know that if you listen to the guide, they will navigate you safely through the journey, you will make it through all the rapids, and you're going to have a great trip, and you're going to be so filled with adrenaline, you've got to go, woo, you made it. Because you have made it through the journey. So too will our journey and our praise be if we are attuned to listening for the voice of Christ as he guides us on this journey of hope. He'll lead us through the rapids, and he'll guide us safely down the river. As he leads us in our life and points us into the purpose for which he has called each and every one of us. But think about it. How much could Mary have missed out on if she hadn't been listening? Or Elizabeth if she had just been too busy to hear these words of Mary coming to her if she was just too caught up? Imagine what would have been missed if they were not listening. What have all of us missed because we weren't listening. In middle school, I had to write this 300 times. Speech is silver, silence is golden. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> Speech is silver and silence is golden. This is a, an old adage. And if that is the case, if speech is silver and silence is golden, then listening must be the most precious metal of them all. Because empty silence may be peaceful, but it still doesn't do anything for us. And speech is great, but if we're merely talking, then we're only serving ourselves. But if we stop and listen, we have a chance for our life to be changed by God or another. Listening is not something that we do naturally. In fact, it's something that we have to work very hard on, especially in situations where we become very familiar. The, just two days ago, Caroline was having a conversation with her mom on the phone, and they were talking about all kinds of things, and I was working on my sermon. She said, I'm sorry that I was interrupting you while I was on the phone. I said, baby, I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> you know, I love her, and we have great conversations, but I've become familiar with her voice, and so I can turn it on and off. But if one of you were sitting in my house talking, I would hear it. <laughs> See, we fail to listen to the voices we're most familiar with. And perhaps that has carried over for some of us in our faith journey. Perhaps once upon a time we were more in tune with God speaking in our life and we have taken it for granted. Or perhaps we've never stopped to listen to God altogether. And that's a practice that we must begin. I've seen it often. We come to worship, we go to prayer, and we're willing to talk to God, just like we're really good at talking at one another. But rather, we are called to talk to one another, which implies a conversation. We're also called to listen to God as he responds to the prayer that we're having. We see even Jesus going off in the silence to pray. 
And I, and I know that part of that time was listening for God to speak and to continue to lead him as he did the work of the kingdom. But I believe if we listen, God will do amazing things through our life as he shows us his hope, as he shows us our purpose. I mean, look at Moses. God calls out to Moses from the burning bush. Moses could have easily kept moving on, but he chose to listen to the voice of God, to enter into that holy place, and to then respond with obedience and do the work of God. Noah, Noah would have drowned in the flood, but he heard God, and he was obedient and acted on what God called him to do. Each of the disciples could have been too busy fishing, too busy collecting taxes, too busy going about their life, but they stopped when Jesus called them to follow. And they listened to this one who had authority, who had great teaching. They were willing to stop, to listen, and to respond in faithfulness. I'm thankful for a church who listens for God, who's willing to step out in faith and continue to find new ministries to be the hands and feet of Christ in our community. I'm thankful that last year we had people who were praying and listening for the voice of God because we were blessed by an amazing opportunity. We had the great chance to host a prom for persons with special needs called the Night to Shine. And we're going to be hosting that event again this year. And it pains me to think about the blessing we could have missed out on if we hadn't have been listening for God calling us to continue seeking new ways to bear the message of the hope of the gospel to all of God's people. And so in just a second, we're going to see a little video about the night to shine because it's going to be coming up again February the 10th. And I invite you to consider giving of your time as we seek to be hope for, the, for this community as we seek to be the hands and feet of Christ. So let us take a moment and hear this word. Hi, my name is Brooke Eggers. I've been a member of PBUMC for about the past nine years. Last year, PBUMC had the amazing opportunity to host Tim Tebow Foundation's Night to Shine. Night to Shine is a mission through a grant by the Tebow Foundation to provide a prom experience for people with special needs. Tim had a special place in his heart for people with special needs and he wanted to dedicate a night to them, Valentine's weekend, to show them God's love. This year, in 2017, Night to Shine will take place at over 300 churches around the world, and Perdido Bay United Methodist is one of those churches. If you were part of Night to Shine last year, you know what amazing experience this was. We provide our guests, roughly 100 guests with special needs, with an incredible night of hair and makeup, flowers, shoe shines, limo rides, a catered meal, dancing, and just an all-around fun night. So where do you come in and what do we need from you for Night to Shine? Well, our biggest need is buddies. A buddy is someone who's paired with a guest with special needs for the night. And it's nothing to be scared of. We have a training session, uh, but really they're just normal people and they want to have a good time. Last year, the biggest complaint I heard from buddies were that their feet were sore for days because their guests just wanted to dance. Some of them even had a hard time getting their guests to eat because they had so much fun dancing and singing the night away in the activity center. So on February 10th, 2017, from six to nine, we're hosting Night to Shine again and we're ecstatic to have another 100 guests come to the campus. Uh, if you were part of Night to Shine 2016, you know that it was an amazing, touching event not just our guests, but their families were so appreciative. They stopped us in the hallway and thanked us for hosting, and it was just an amazing night all around. So we need people to be buddies. Uh, we also have some other volunteer opportunities, but those are filling up pretty quickly. We need roughly 110 people to be buddies. So if you have any calling and you think you can be a part of the event and host a person, for the, a guest for the night, um, you really just need to stay with them, make sure they have a good time, make sure they don't get lost in the activity center, uh, and, and make their night special. And I promise you, it will be a night you remember forever. To learn more about Night to Shine at PBUMC, 
you can go to pbumcnts.com and look for the information there. You can also register as a volunteer from that page or if you have a family, friend, neighbor, uh, anyone with special needs who you think would enjoy the event as a guest, you can also register them. Guests this year need to be ages 14 or older and there's no um, upper age limit so register any of your special needs family friends and neighbors and we would love to have them as a guest for the evening we're thankful to brooke acres and laura garrettson for their leadership on night to shine and if you'd like to sign up you can go to that website or we've made it very convenient on your way out of worship today there's a sign up table in the atrium we would invite you to give as your time as, as you feel called to do so uh, you saw my buddy there in the red suit. We had a good time. Uh, he, he was a lot of fun. He was the dancing king. Uh, and uh, so it was, it was a great time. But as, you, as the guests were leaving, and as their, their parents and caretakers were picking them up, it was amazing to hear the conversations taking place. They had experienced love. They had experienced hope in that night together. It was just amazing to, to watch them dance, but then to hear the conversations that were being had. It was just an amazing thing to hear their joy as they left. And so I hope you'll be a part of that. But if we were to hear, if we were to listen, and if we are listening, what are you hearing? This journey of hope that we're on doesn't end December 25th. The journey of hope is a lifetime. It's what we are called to as Christians. And the good news is that our hope doesn't end when we die. In fact, our hope extends into eternity. That's the promise of Jesus Christ. That's the promise of Christmas is that the kingdom of God is entering our world and it will continue into eternity. So this journey of hope begins when you begin to follow Jesus Christ and it continues as he assures to be with you and to stay near you. But what are you hearing? Who are you listening to? What is the influential voice in your life? If you told me a, a person that was very influential in your life, someone that you listen to frequently, I could tell you pretty much everything about you. I could probably tell you how you spend your money. I could probably tell you how you think about the world. I could probably tell you the things that you're passionate about. And there are a lot of very influential voices in our world and in our culture. And some of them are very good, and some of them are very insightful. But friends, I don't want any best-selling author, I don't want even the best pastor that God has ever put on this earth to be the voice that is shaping my life. I want it to be solely the voice of Jesus Christ, the one who knows me to the very depths of my soul, the one who knows how to call out to me and to draw me near at the moments when I need it the most. And so if you are hearing any voice other than the voice of Christ, I would encourage you to put that voice away and to begin to listen more closely to Jesus calling out to you. Because as you are listening to the voice of Jesus, you will hear this message of hope, a hope that never fails. One of a great theologian, Jürgen Moltmann, who has been called the theologian of hope, he said this, he said, the person who hopes for nothing cannot be disappointed either. And that is very true. But then he goes on to ask this. But is he or she then still a living person? He says, no. He or she is more like a corpse. Friends, hope is what gives us life. Hope is what gives us purpose and meaning. Because it's something that calls us beyond ourselves to something greater. I believe that we see this hope manifest in the final verse of our passage. Elizabeth said, And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. God did not demand God did not command Mary to do anything. Rather, God spoke a message to Mary, and she heard 
the message because she was willing to listen. And she believed God and responded with faithfulness. And she experienced the fulfillment of hearing the voice of God giving her that hope in her life. I know that it's not always easy to listen for the hope of Jesus Christ in life. Because we have to deal with sin, we have to deal with pain, we have to deal with evil. But if you fail to listen for the voice of Christ, if you are just unwilling to open your ears, if you choose to ignore the voice of God, then you're only going to continue in that cycle of pain and frustration. But if you do open your life to the hope of Christ, God will begin speaking to you the words of peace, his words of life, his assurance of hope that never fails. I fear far too many of us have had our ears closed for too long. I'm personally convicted of all the things that I had missed out on, that God's probably been calling me to, but I've just been unwilling to listen. I wonder what gifts God was trying to give me, but I was just too busy to hear him. If what you're hearing is pain and doubt and fear, if all you hear is noise that is crowding your soul, Jesus wants to pierce that noise in your life. And he wants to inject within your soul the joy of the Spirit, which we see overwhelms the life of Elizabeth and comes forth and prays. Because this worship and praise that we see in Elizabeth's life, this belief in the hope of Jesus Christ that never fails, this is the embodiment of one that not only knows in their head the hope of Jesus Christ, but it is the mark of someone who has heard and then gone on to experience the fulfillment of that hope, the fulfillment of that promise in their life. Just as Mary made a long journey to Elizabeth's house, so too Jesus has journeyed to this earth. And Jesus has journeyed to each and every one of your homes. And Jesus is standing at the door with a greeting. And what is he saying? What do you hear Jesus saying to you as he steps into your home? I see you standing in my home. I don't always hear it clearly. But I do hear hope. Even if at times very faint. And hope is the only thing that will save you. Will you listen to this greeting of Jesus or will you ignore it? I pray that you hear it. And I pray that when you do hear this hope of Jesus Christ, that you will experience it and that it will transform you and that your life will never be the same. Friends, let us listen. Let us hear hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.